My name is Mariana Ramirez with the Juntos Center, and today I'm talking about COVID's impact on vulnerable communities. With close to 10 million cases and over 237,000 deaths, the U.S. continues to rank number one in COVID burden globally, surpassing countries like India and Brazil. Those who have had the disease worry about unknown long-term health consequences, while those who lost family and friends are mourning their loss. Sadly, although the U.S. has the resources for testing and tracing and the fiscal flexibility to support its people, the response has not been effective enough. We know that Blacks and Latinos are dying at higher rates than whites. A few weeks ago, the CDC released a report on excess death rates, which highlights that the largest percentage increases were among Hispanic adults 25 to 44. However, higher death rates in a smaller population and lower rates in larger populations both impact our society. While COVID death rates are 3.4 times higher than Blacks than they are for non-Hispanic whites, 99,494 or 71% of the total U.S. deaths are of whites. If we cut COVID protections, all groups are hurt. One of the biggest challenges of this pandemic is that we live in an individualized society where individual benefit is valued over what benefits the community. But this unequal burden of COVID on minority populations is not surprising. In 2019, 53 million U.S. workers, including 44% of all workers 18 to 64 years, were employed in low-wage jobs earning a median hourly wage of $10.22. According to the Bureau's 2019 National Compensation Survey for Civilian Workers, paid sick leave, almost universal at the upper end of the wage distribution, is more scarcer than less money one makes. For example, 92% of workers in the top quarter of earnings, or those making more than $32 per hour, have access to some sort of paid sick leave versus only 51% of workers earning wages in the lowest quarter, or $13.80 or less per hour. Among the lowest earning tenth, which includes those making $10.80 an hour or less, just 31% have paid sick leave. The U.S. and South Korea are the only two countries in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development where paid sick leave is not guaranteed. In the U.S., only 12 states and the District of Columbia currently require employers to provide sick leave to their workers. Another study by the Harvard School of Public Health analyzed U.S. county COVID-19 deaths and confirmed COVID-19 cases and positive COVID-19 tests in Illinois and New York City zip codes by area percent of poverty, percent crowding, percent of population of color, and the index of concentration at the extremes. They found that individuals in low income areas may be more likely to be classified as essential workers who are less able to practice physical distancing and may not have access to personal protective equipment. They also noted a strong association with county percent crowding, defined as the proportion of households in an area with more than one person per room. The counties with highest level of poverty had also the higher rates of COVID death rates. At the same time, between March 18 and, March, and May 19, the top five U.S. billionaires saw their wealth grow by a total of 75.5 million. A 2017% analysis reported that the three U.S. billionaires, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett, continue to own as much wealth as the bottom half of all U.S. households combined. As of September of this year, 12.1 million Americans are unemployed, with current unemployment rates ranging for, from 7 for whites to 12.1 and 10.3 for Blacks and Latinos, respectively. But we need data to take action. 
on June 4, 2020, the Trump administration released new reporting requirements for COVID test results to include race and ethnicity. However, as of September 16, 2019, 50% of the reported cases were missing this data. To date, non-national, state, or local health agencies report any data on COVID by cases, income or educational level, occupation, disability status, sexual orientation or gender identity, incarceration status or nativity. This lack of data is unjust itself and it hinders the stop of the disease. In Wyandotte County, there are 165,429 residents. It's a minority majority county where 22% of its residents are black, 28% uh, are Latinos, and the rest are white and other minorities. 17.4% of Wyandotte County residents are college educated, 14.4% speak English less than very well. The median household income is $44,873, way lower than the state's. And 21% of houses in Wyandotte County have one or more severe housing problems. As you can see, there have been over 8,000 cases of COVID, of which over 3,000 are of Latinos. And of the 166 deaths, over 50 are of African American. Industries of healthcare and social services, manufacturing, retail, trade, and construction are among, among the most common. And if you can see these two maps, they have the distribution of um, ethnic groups and racial groups in Wyandotte County. The blue dots are African-American populations. Yellow is Latinos. Green is white and red are Asian. And then if you see the incidence of cases, you can see that it mirrors minority community with the highest incidence. So the Health Equity Task Force is a group of community leaders and people from community-based organizations who came together early on in March um, to address some of the racial and ending disparities related to COVID. A big focus of the task force has been on providing COVID testing in the communities in partnership with trusted community members like faith-based organizations, community clinics, libraries that are in neighborhoods where the most uh, affected populations live and work. Together, we have tested over 4,000 individuals at more than 100 events, and we are really reaching the, the populations that we target. So this work of the Health Equity Task Force led us to write uh, an application to the Rapid Acceleration of Diagnostic for Underserved Populations, rabex up. And in the next two years, we're going to be working with 10 counties in the state of Kansas, four urban counties and six rural counties to improve testing among minority communities. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact me and I'll be happy to answer during the Q&A session. Thank you.